Happy Shadowy Saturday Part 2. Over here, SeaWorld. Over there, Doubletree Hotel. Up there, helicopter. Probably for some other crime that's happening in Orlando. We're back at the Doubletree for our annual pilgrimage to Free Play Florida. Three days of pay, one price. Play as many video games as you want. Classic retro video games, pinball. There's celebrities here. Retro video games past that Billy Mitchell. Panels, good times. We always love coming here. It's hard to believe a year has gone by since the last time that we were here. Hey, they've expanded this year. We have a whole large outer section for art. Lots of cool things. There's art everywhere. Snorlax. It's Rabono. Look who it is. You're on camera. Where can they find you, Banky? At Banky Art on all the social media sites Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, that's what it's at. Banky is one of our best art friends. <laughs> I love it so. <laughs> this is some of her work. Check it out. I did five new pieces. Just for this? So, Let's see. I did the new, uh, new Dragon's Lair because my style's changed. I did Tron. Nice. Ice cold beer. Of course. A new Star Wars based off the old pin pinball glass art. And, uh, you know. Pinbot. Yeah, Pinbot. Nice. It's the variety of Pinbot. So check out Banky. Go to Facebook. We'll put a link here for you. We're going in. There's so many people here. This is so cool. All right, we switched our position. We're starting from the back now. Take a look at all the games that they have here. Mystic Marathon, Joust 2. Power Drive, I love that game. Got a bunch of Rampage stuff. Space Ace. Carnival. Journey, what? Brian Collin, the creator of Rampage, soon to be a major motion picture. And here it is. In different hertz, so it'll just flip across your screen. We have replacement parts for arcade games. But more importantly, this is a 10 foot tall Atari Star Wars vector game. Over here we have Black Widow. When was the last time you saw Black Widow? Firefox, Red Baron, Gravatar, Space Wars, what? Right next to that 10 foot tall Star Wars game, we have a 10 foot tall Donkey Kong, what? And in between we have a 1 million point attempt, hardest difficulty doubles, Mario Brothers, no pals, Steven Boyer, Steven Kleshich, I'm butchering those names, here they are. This is the best of the best. Oh my god! How did I get out of that? Holy cow, they did it. The mission continues. Moving along. I, Robot. Atari Major Havoc. Tempest. Cocktail Table Asteroids. Pinball games over here. Roadshow. Star Wars. Party Zone. Vintage pinball machines over here. Space shuttle. Defender. It's not working currently. Joker poker. Love that. Kroll. They have a Kroll arcade machine here. New York, New York. Exterminator. There's another Star Wars pinball back there. Gottlieb Reactor. That game is horrible. Qbert. More retro pinball. Close Encounters of the Third Kind pinball game. It's for sale. 
got smaller arcade cabinets here, Kick, Robbie Roto, Space App, Colony 7, Neo Geo in the house, Dink Dug, Centipede, Spiders, Monaco, GP, I used to rule at this game. We have Starfighter video game here. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Pinball. Pinball. Superman pinball from Atari. Tron. Flash. I'm in ADD overload. Tron. Agrat. Star Trigon. Crystal Castles. Ghosts and Goblins. We may have to play a little bit of that in a bit. Berserk. R type. Another Flash. Gordon Pinball Machine. Missile Command is not rare, but a sit down Missile Command is hella rare. Holy cow. Night Striker. Race Driven. Choplifter. Akari Warriors. Mario, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. Silkworm, Final Fight, Shinobi, Ninja Gaiden, NFL Blitz 2000, crisp graphics on that one, Mortal Kombat 2, Killer Instinct, Elevator Action back there, this is crazy, we're going to enter this area that has very classic pinball machines, this is history of pinball, 80 to 90 years old some of these items. Seven red and blue. Final fight going, team building, family building, but it's up to Jess to finish the game now as she chews like a horse, where she norm <laughs> normally makes fun of me for doing I'm that. Die. <laughs> you're dead. Oh, you're alive. You can do it. Maybe not. Oh. Drink that can of soda that's on the floor next to that giant turkey. <laughs> We're moving on to Street Fighter. Oh boy. I shall be Ryu. Just should be Chun-Li, but instead she's choosing the same guy. What's wrong with you? This is how we fight. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You can't come near me. Oh. They have a cocktail table warlords. That's ridiculous. Mary won at warlords. She's never played this before in her life. 
Jesse's mad now, so she has to play again. Best two out of three. So we just bought this. This is our loan souvenir for the year. This is something brand new they did this year. They actually did a homebrew Atari 2600 working game. And I love that these Pac-Man type inspired oranges are included in the pinball. And it's limited. 100 cartridges they made. And this was number 39. So incredibly cool. The box art was done by our friend Brandon. Video game legends at this table. These are the men that have set the records, that have played the games. They told us you can beat them. They have this new Starfighter cabinet. Absolutely ridiculous. We're gonna have to try to play in this. Here we have a sit down Star Wars game, classic consoles, you know, actually, PlayStation there, not so classic. Pong, cocktail table pong, I've never seen anything like this. This looks crazy. We're gonna have to try this. You're gonna have to get on the other side. This is absolutely crazy. It's like real life Pong! Oh my god! <laughs> oh! I've never seen her laugh so much! Oh! This is nuts! This is absolutely crazy! <laughs> I lost! <laughs> she beat me two games in a row! Atari Age is here. They specialize in making new games for classic systems. Awesome new games for the 2600. By the way, they don't only have 2600 games, they have 5200, 7800, and Jaguar games. We've reached that time in the event that we're kind of questioning what the heck is going on. Here goes Brandon, and here's Space Ghost. Brandon has very strange friends, one, one of them. Also Joker and a uh, Ghostbusters guy. But that's Brandon. Let's get a little space ace. Mary's gonna play so I can film her. This is gonna be horrible. This is actually the first time that she's ever, uh, she just tried the highest difficulty level. Yeah, she's gone back from the street. Space Ace is not functioning properly. He's had a very long day. Donkey Kong Jr. Billy Mitchell is going to play this 10 foot tall Donkey Kong machine. How long will he be there? Mary has wanted to play Tempest all day. Somebody left their game in progress. He's just trying to die out. She chose one player. She didn't even want to ask me if I wanted to play or not. Yikes. Mary's ready to challenge for a title. There's one of the video game legends here. Playing Zookeeper, I haven't played this in years. I got up to level four on my first guy. I couldn't even tell you if that's good or bad at this point. I think this is Mary's first time ever playing this. You've played this before? Elevator action. Just died already. 
there may be a problem because player two screens are upside down for some reason. She lasted longer on upside down than right side up. There's tons of other classic retro consoles here. I see a VIC-20 in the distance. I see a Vectrek machine. Atari Jaguar in the back. I think we might play one of our last games of the night. Pac-Man, my favorite game of all time. This particular machine has been used to set records here. We've got Billy Mitchell with a score of 3,333,000. Got all the folks there. Same thing, max score. We're gonna see if that rubs off on us. Baltar. 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 Start the show. No good comes of the video game, son. <laughs> Start the show, jackass. <laughs> So much noise I can't even hear myself think. It's all bounce around inside this uh, this cabin. All right. So now I understand that you're a real big Atari fan. So uh, exactly how old were you when you got your first Atari? Thirty nine. <laughs> real? No. Uh, I was five. I was five, and my dad brought him home from a store called the Video King. It was down the street from us, and. Uh, they were on closeout, it was 1983, so it was in the middle of a video game crash. And that's the only reason I got one, because even though I've been asking about asking for it for at least a year, my dad didn't want to spend all that money because he's like, no, no, the future's in computers. You know, and uh, but finally they went on clearance, much cheaper. We got one, my very first one, and I was obsessed with uh, barnstorming for some reason, which I think is one of the most boring games. Actually, you just fly and try and go in both barns and avoid birds. It's a high concept, but but I you know I loved Atari. I thought it was really fun, and you know eventually I wrote this book. But it's really my dad's fault because I love the art on the boxes, and I really you know I loved it. I would stare at those things. I, I wanted to save them, and my dad's like, who who saves the boxes to your video games? You know, it's, it's like saving the box to your refrigerator. You know, and so he threw them all away. And of course, if, you know, years of therapy later and buying them all back, you know, that sort of like, you know, sort of just focused my obsession, you know, and eventually led to that book. Oh, well, very cool, very cool. Our next guest we had here last year, and he was just a ball of energy. So he is also known as the, what else, again, Tiny French of Kilomere, the classic gaming whiz. So let's put your hands together for Keith Alpacari. Uh, what? Uh, tell me what your Tell me what your first job was. Oh, well, my first job. Uh, I was a grave digger uh, in Massachusetts, so I could put like, a, grave, a, grave. A, a grave digger. Yeah, so you all you like knock them down, and I'll just bury them. <laughs> so you call me like the grave master. <laughs> that might be kind of cool. Right. Yeah, I don't want to call me that. That sounds like a sidekick, right? So, oh, that, well, that actually might work on the ghost planet. That's, that's, that's actually not not bad. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well, what, what kind of jobs have you had since your grave digging gig? Uh, I worked at 
Pe Smart. That was depressing. Uh, the Fire. Was that D'Angelo's? It's a sub shot in New England. Was it that D'Angelo's thing in here? All right. Only eat that one. Nice. Yeah, that's a sad place. Uh, you know, right now I'm more of an entrepreneur. I'm a classic game of Wiz, 150 pounds of screen muscle. Uh, one job I had was just badgering a wrestler for a long time until WWE gave me a check and told me to tell me to leave and go away. Uh, that was technically my last paying job. Uh, and I just like, it's basically harassment. So, not really a job, but I got paid so I consider it a job. Okay, so did, did, did you actually get to wrestle? No. They would, they would not let me touch him at all. Because they were threatened by the grave master. Uh, so so do, do you have any combat skills at all that uh, would be yeah. useful to the team? Uh, actually, I can defeat myself faster than anybody else. <laughs> you, can, you, you can beat up yourself? Yeah, I really, yeah, I can do a number on myself. Yeah, I don't want to be a little demonstration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's the problem? Nothing, I'm just minding my own business. <laughs> you're freaking ugly, you know? And you're talking to yourself. Don't talk to yourself like that. <laughs> you know, we have limited insurance. You can't talk to me like that. Well, I do. You. Well, I'll show you how it's done around here. <laughs> Nothing, man. I just have like personality disorder. Don't get mad. Well, I'm mad. At my, I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at myself. Really? This is actually more of an emotional battle than it is a physical battle. So if you want me to like emotionally get someone distressed, like, I'm like your man. You got any enemies that like, you know, like Jean Grey or something that deal with mental powers? What's happening? I can't see you. Am I still here? <laughs> All right, our final guest tonight. This is a performer. He is a uh, he is a voice actor, and he has starred in such things as Aqua Teens and Hunger Force. Uh, are, are, are they the same thing? Or is... And uh, also on uh, something called Robot Chicken. <laughs> so, sounds like a villain that I beat up once. So let's give it up for George Lowe. It's not medical. <laughs> uh, hello there. Okay. Hey kids, look at me. I'm up past my bedtime. <laughs> How about that? Hi, Spacey. Greetings. What's happening? Oh, all kinds. I had a bad trip to the ear doctor the other day, so if I miss anything, I'll, I'll just ask you again. They sucked out the part of my brain that does long division. <laughs> Well, no, there's, there's, there's no matter I can't hear anything, they go in with a surgical tool called an alligator and they were very precise. <laughs> this one over here, they bring in this damn hose and they got some fat lady in the hall named Inez sucking it out with a hooper. So they actually, it looked like I had a pet rabbit. The stuff that came out of my ear, it looked like I had a rabbit living in my ear. I'm sorry that I had to share that with you. I don't say the latest has bags on the chair in front of you if you feel the need to lose your dinner. Yeah, I was going to say, that's probably better to search conversation. Hi, Space. Hi. You handsome devil, you. Man, this is something. Look at the table. My God, the work you guys are doing. It's lovely what they made. Hey, look, the last guy lost a penny. <laughs> this, this crap's already paying dividends. <laughs> oh God! God no, the residuals didn't. So yes, space. Let her rip. Is this is this your first video game convention? My first. Uh, this is actually my first yeah, pinball thing, and uh, it's great because normally the comic book. I'm sure some of you do the comic book conventions, 
will agree with me. It, it's basically a great big building that smells like compass soup. <laughs> I see it there, can't it? <laughs> and you always get the CMF. That's the convention mystery fart. Man, walk through about four or five of them boys. Ask me why I'm blind in the right eye. Some kid who's been eating okra all weekend from Des Moines. <laughs> nice pace. Boy, the last guy, man, he was something. Well, I need that chair. Yeah, this he was wired up and off he goes. My God, I'd be at the hospital if I did half of what that guy did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He nearly took out that desk That's like there. a guy come out and be me and roll around in the chair while I did the voice back there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Let me just have a sip of my brain and natriuretic peptide soda. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> so, uh, so aside from your, your stint on, on Hazel, my uh, what, 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 other, what other characters are... Well, you handsome devil, I'll just go ahead and spill the beans. We, uh, we had 112 episodes of a little thing called Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Space Ghost Coast to Coast? Yeah. Yeah, well, the whole thing was stream of consciousness. We had great writers, they did great scripts, and then we would all go off on tangents. I, it, 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 I watched the show. It, uh, funky Baby, funny. Andy and I pulled Funky Baby just out of nowhere. Say again? I ended a session that was just sitting in the booth going... <laughs> Andy's like, had to run 16 miles to get to the booth that I was in. It's crazy, you would think right across from each other, not at the studio. You have to go down like six halls to get over to the voiceover room. Andy came in and started doing all that. Oh, baby, I got you, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> it was a madhouse. It was a madhouse. Well, it's what like other job would I have done, you know? Can you imagine if the medicine thing had worked out? <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, everybody who does it have progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathies. Take one step forward. Not so fast, Mrs. Goldman. <laughs> Pardon my indelicacy. <laughs> There's a reason you have those pulsing nodules all over the top of your head. Hello, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to run away with your show. No, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. I'm, right. I'm sorry, folks. It's more blabby than the last thing. I can't roll. <laughs> I think we'll just change the name of the show. It's sort of way back, and that'll be it. I'll be like the boy in the bubble that everybody will have to come see me and get the picture handed by an assistant. Did he touch anything? Yeah, you just dip the bubble in the ink. There you go. It's kind of a paw print. Here you go. Thanks for dropping by. That'll be $60. That'll be the new feel sorry for me price. He's in a bubble, for God's sake. Give him the $60. <laughs> I had a guy sit down with me at the table today. God bless him. Just, just came right behind the table, sat down, started talking to me. <laughs> These are the times, even without legs, I feel like I could walk out of the building on just my ass muscles. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, you want to hear the worst medical joke in history? You'll love this. You can use this at the next thing. Guy goes to the doctor. I can do the whole thing in six seconds. Anybody can stop watch? Here's the hotel telling me to stop cussing. Penis, 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 penis. <laughs> you, you, you intro it, and now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a six-second joke. So, a six-second joke? Yeah, don't worry. Six-second joke. So, the six-second joke. Guy goes to the doctor, the doctor says, you've got to stop masturbating. The guy says, why? The doctor says, so I can examine you. <laughs> <laughs> Six-second joke brought to you by Trump Brothers Ball Game Wieners at one point you touch them. <laughs> I don't think I have to do anything right here. Right? Are we doing well, that? We'll just have you back each year and you just sign another part of the desk. You're going to keep it your butthole. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I just call me a butthole. Hey, me, I'm a butthole. The two of us are two buttholes. That's stereo buttholes. <laughs> Remember them? They used to open for, I think, the motels. The stereo motels. 
They were they played their own version of the serpents to them. It's kind of a punk version. <laughs> oh, okay. this isn't mine. What is this? I have, so I have, I have two no idea. Why they, they, they gave me the card. It's a game called Space Harry. Are you responsible for this? <laughs> not the stuff you just said. <laughs> you know, I'm not paying for summer camp for you if this is the kind of crap you're going to have. <laughs> Now let's try and sight read it and see what we get. <laughs> Far away, there was a special land where peaceful dragons lived peaceful lives until the attack. I'd read it like Morgan Freeman is messed up here. <laughs> Vicious creatures seeking violence. <laughs> you are their last hope. Face a blast and dodge your way through a frantic fantasy land swarming with unbelievable monsters and mutoids constantly coming at you. It must be the kind of freedom only a free man can know. I hope the ocean is as blue as I can see it in my dreams. I hope. I hope. Brandon, you've seen him before. Last time you saw him, he was scalped. Oh no, you saw him at. Uh, we just saw you at Spooky. Before we see me all the time, we go to the same places, yeah, dude. Before uh, we go to all that, the same places. That's when he was scalping figment pops. Scalping figments, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So let me tell you what's happened since then. I'm gonna tell you what's happened since I was scalping figment pops. Okay. I went to I went to Walmart looking for cookie pans for Keith Apicary, okay. but it had to be a sound thing. I had to find the ones that sounded best. So I'm sitting in the middle of Walmart, smashing pans for Keith Apicary. Um, then he asked me to get two horse troughs. So I had to find a horse store to find two horse troughs. So that was, that was something else I had to do. It's other, been than, an adventure. other than that, it's just been an adventure. Um, I, I gotta thank you, people like you who come out to these events. It's so, it's so huge just to have people like you come out to these events. Well, and we love these events. The thing is about Free Play Florida, and I know I've said it, I've said it when you've been interviewed me before, we're part of something called Bite Amusement now, we're a non-profit, and we're, what we do is we preserve this arcade pinball. That's what we do. We, 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 we present it. Yeah, and kids get to experience this stuff, and that's what it's all worth. By the way. Yes. This artwork. Guys, I got to do the artwork for an Atari. <laughs> it's 2017. I want to preface this. You're putting this out in 2017, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's Hopefully. 2017, and I got to make the box for an Atari 2600 game. Wow. <laughs> How does this happen? By the way, not that this is a big thing. We enjoy coming here every year. We yes, love this and we event. enjoy having you. I love Brandon also. Super stand-up guy. But we pay our way here too. Yeah, Just so you always show. do. You always and do. Brandon insists every year to have us out. But we want to make sure that we're telling you guys because this event has blown up this year. And we don't, you know, we don't keep any of the money. The money yeah. goes right back into the project, preserving old school arcade and pinball uh, machines. It's so important to make sure they keep these things alive for the kids. And not only that, but you know, we have opportunities for kids just to learn about this stuff. You know, we have the soldering room today. Kids were learning how to solder, which is such an important arcade thing. Uh, it's just, it's so cool. It's so freaking cool. Just so. glad to be a part of it next year when you guys are watching this because there's so many people that came up to us this year and said you came here because you watched our videos from prior years but next year it's going to be even bigger and better next year i think space goes should interview you interview you what are you thinking <laughs> yeah let's is do that, it is that something that would work let's okay. do it okay sounds yeah. good all right thank you guys thank you guys we're back home a really awesome day out of free play florida this is going to be awesome probably give this a play or two and then display this proudly with the rest of our retro video game stuff. If you guys are interested, Free Play Florida happens every year, annually, one weekend a year, um, and it is only growing bigger and bigger, as we mentioned before. You should check out the links in the description below so that you guys can make plans to attend next year. Central Florida has a really good retro gaming community. We have a lot of different places to go especially if you're older. We've been to Player One Bar in the videos before. There's a, uh, another location called Joysticks downtown. We went to the Daytona Video Game Hall of Fame um, and can check out all of those videos in our library. 
It's something that we love very much. It's not something that we get a tremendous amount of hits on for our videos, but it is something that we love, so we love to share it with you. And on that note, thank you very much for coming along with us. So thank you for all of your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Have a great night. We'll see you guys.